Yes, Japanese scientists insist that you can die of a broken heart. In 1991, a group of four Japanese scientists, Dote, Sato, Hatayashi, and Ishihara, published an article with a totally unpronounceable title. And in this article, they described a new kind of cardiomyopathy, um, disturbance or disorder of the heart. And it came to be known as stress cardioma, cardiomyopathy or uh, Takotsubo syndrome. Takotsubo is an interesting word. It has nothing to do with the heart. It comes from Japanese and it describes a trap for, for an octopus because when the heart is affected by this condition, the left ventricle of the heart takes a shape that resembles a kind of round jar that the Japanese use to catch lobsters and octopuses. It was first described, as I said, in 1991. It's a syndrome and it occurs uh, after a deep psychological, emotional or physical stress, such as a divorce or a heartbreak. Hence, the broken heart syndrome. We've been aware of the broken heart syndrome for decades, and yet we don't know. We have no idea what are the underlying processes. Probably it has something to do with catecholamines, an excess of catecholamines, sudden excess of catecholamines. Catecholamines are stress response um, hormones. High levels of catecholamines create cause high blood pressure and this could lead to headaches, sweating, heart pounding and palpitations, pain in the chest, anxiety and even worse, up to death. Catecholamines include uh, hormones such as dopamine, epinephrine, adrenaline and norepinephrine, noradrenaline and so on. There's a new study out and this is the reason for this video. And the study kind of reviews or cobbles together data from across the United States. And it gives us a new insight into the epidemiology and the outcomes of this very romantic sounding syndrome. First of all, women are much more likely to experience this syndrome, but men are much more likely to die from it, which proves, of course, the, that men are much more romantic. Um, today um, is a week. The, last week, it's about a week or 10 days ago, there was um, Takotsubo analysis published. There was an article in the Journal of American Heart Association. It was authored by Muhammad Muvahid of the University of Arizona and his colleagues. They use a database. There's a database called the National Inpatient Sample and they used this database and they took a sample from patients hospitalized around the nation. It's a weighted data, data set. It, it doesn't have data from every hospitalization, but individual patients in the data set can stand in for those who are not there. And this allows you to estimate stuff like the total number of admissions for a diagnosis across the country and so on and so forth. So what I'm trying to say, it's pretty reliable. The researchers flagged admissions with a diagnosis code for this syndrome. They identified close to 40,000 individuals with the syndrome, and they scaled it up to approximately 200,000 US admissions between 2016 and 2020. That's 40,000 admissions per year in this single country. It's not a huge number. There's about half a million to 600,000 admissions per year for other types of myocardial infarctions, but it's still a shocking number to think that 40,000 people a year in the United States alone are affected to that extent by the stress of events such as breakups by heartbreak. That's pretty surprising, at least for me. As I said, women are much more likely to have this stress cardiomyopathy. 83% of all the cases were men. And there is a slight increase in prevalence over time, but nothing dramatic. So, um, one drawback of this study is that 
most of the data pertain to the period, or some of the data pertain, pertain to the period of the COVID pandemic or the onset of the COVID pandemic. Still, women get this syndrome and men die of it. <laughs> As I said, men are more romantic. If we break down the incidence by age group, you can see an interesting increase. As people get older, there's a near doubling of the incidence of the risk after age 45. So some people say that estrogen may play a protective role in this condition. And as women lose this protection, they tend to experience heartbreak and other stressful situations via their hearts. Um, we might be seeing an increase associated with menopause here. And, but this does not explain why men die of this syndrome much more than women. Majority of deaths are actually men. Um, the authors compare outcomes among people hospitalized with this syndrome to outcomes of people hospitalized, patients hospitalized without the syndrome. And that seems to be a serious, a big um, uh, control group. So there is a 12-fold risk for cardiogenic shock compared with the general inpatient population. When you exper experience sudden stress, such as breakup, your chances to experience cardiogenic shock are 12 times higher. That's in, that in itself is shocking. Individuals admitted to hospital with other types of heart disease or heart attack or whatever um, were not analyzed that massively in the, or that thoroughly in the study. So we are not quite clear as to what the syndrome contributes to endpoint results such as hospitalization and mortality and, and so on and so forth. 6.6% of the patients with the syndrome died during admission. That's pretty high. That's unusually high because only 2.4% of people, uh, of patients in a typical hospital die. So that it's like a threefold increase in the risk of mortality. Men with, with this uh, cardiomyopathy were more likely to die than women, as I said. Men had an 11.2% mortality rate, rate compared to 5.5% in women. In other words, two-thirds of the patients who died were men. And this has also been increasing over time. There's no clear explanation for this discrepancy, except possibly, as I said, some hormonal background. Men are more likely to develop the condition from physical as opposed to emotional stress. That might change the risk profile. No one knows. There is also the possibility that this is a kind of stubborn men phenomenon. Men might be less likely to go to a hospital. They experience symptoms, they feel bad, but they don't go to a hospital. They don't take medication. They don't go to a doctor because, you know, they're tough and what have you. And even when symptoms are mild, they can bring on the full onslaught of the syndrome. And the death, the mortality rate is shocking. 11.2% is very high. The paper raises many questions and affords or provides few answers, like most of the papers since 1991. Um, however, there is a connection, it seems. It establishes a connection between mind, emotions, and body. It's another brick in this mounting wall of evidence that our minds affect our bodies so profoundly that our minds can kill. If we experience stress, which is a psychological phenomenon, it could kill us. The connection is subjective, admittedly, not necessarily objective or ontological, but still it's there. The Kochubu cardiomyopathy is a, a fatal disease, potentially so, yes. It is for all the risks of a major uh, heart attack. And there's no convenient treatments. Cardiac cath uh, catheter uh, uh, medication, almost nothing seems to work. And so um, stress seems to be um, a fatality or mortality risk. And we need to begin to tackle uh, stress 
much more thoroughly than we've done until now. We tend to think of stress as inevitable byproduct or side effect of living, of life, but it's, a, it's very dangerous and it precipitates a multiplicity of diseases, not only this syndrome. And so the existence of a syndrome like this shows us, demonstrates conclusively that stress can be toxic and fatal. None of us can live stress-free lives. I'm not saying that we can eliminate stress, stress or remove stress from our lives, but we must be aware of what stress does to us. We must be able to identify uh, stress. We must be able to get in touch with our own emotions and bodily reactions. And we, we must seek help the minute we um, experience this kind of overwhelming stress coupled with initial mild symptoms. So I'm going to deal with stress in several videos. Um, I'm going to deal with the Schwarzer Knoll uh, coping strategies. There are four of them. I'm going to analyze stress in a variety of other settings. Stress is a frequent visitor in relationships that involve abuse, especially narcissistic abuse.